We met in a small ski town called Queenstown, 2013. It was not long before we packed up our things and started exploring the world together. Over the past nine years, we've lived in New Zealand, Canada, Bali, and um, the UK. We hiked the Annapurna in Nepal, visited the Taj Mahal, and become yogis in India. Silent retreats, scooters, and diving in Thailand. Living in vans, traveling the UK and Europe. So how did we end up here? Today we're going to be answering the question, is it possible to live with your ex? So for those of you new to the channel, my name's Pete and this is Loretta. We've been together for nine years, married for six and separated for three months. People seem to find this quite controversial that we're still living together. I even did a poll on Instagram which got really mixed reviews. So this channel is all about health and longevity and relationships are all part of that. So I thought it'd be useful to share our experience of how we've ended up living together but not together. The way it's gonna work, we're gonna answer the most obvious questions and I've also got some close friends to ask us personal questions that we're gonna answer at the end of the video. Okay, so the first question, I think the most important question is gonna be, why have we broken up? To be honest, it's not because we don't love each other. Ultimately, we had like a week apart, didn't we? I went on a retreat and Pete was by himself and I think we're both feeling the same yeah. thing at the same time. Like it's we- so much better on my own. Yeah, basically he enjoyed being by himself. Himself. And I was like just in, enjoying being with like like-minded people not that we're not like-minded Realizing that you can love someone but want something more and for P I think he would probably like someone who is into a bit more like sports or like something active oh, yeah. Even though I love to walk that's like not the sport or active <laughs> thing that you're into and I really want like like a deep love Like a monk? No, like a deep love like someone who like just love so yeah so we still love each other yeah. but it's like oh this realization that oh crap maybe it's not each other yeah what i've learned is relationships are work and it's all about growing together and we've done a lot of growth mm over the nine years you do develop a lot and like I'm not the same person I was nine years ago you're we would laugh so hard if we if we saw me I'll put a picture of us up like nine years ago like look completely different people we've been on such a journey but essentially we've got to a part of our lives where we're heading in different directions yeah I'll tell you how it happened this might make you laugh I got the train back because I'd been on this retreat and I was thinking like this whole time like oh my god maybe we're like we're not meant to be together like what the heck hell you know like such a huge realization when you know think of how long we've been together and I always pictured my future and then I, I got off the train and I, before we talked too much I said do you think we might just be friends and Pete just went yeah <laughs> that was it he'd been feeling it but not knowing what he was feeling and I'd been feeling it and almost wanted to deny that feeling mm -hmm. And yeah, so it was actually very simple. It was there and then yeah. like, yeah, okay then. Why did we decide to live together then? For the most part, I actually enjoy living with Pete. He's like not as clean as I would like. Well, you're being nice though. I am. He's, okay. He's not as clean as I would like, but I'm probably not as tidy as he would like. Yeah. You're, My stuff's like. Exhibit A is like all, all the, the right blank, stuff everywhere. Yeah. Like I love Pete. Why would I not want to live with you? Yeah. It is boring being on your own as well. Like I wouldn't want to live on my own. I disagree. I'd rather live with Pete than pay like twice rent. Yeah, also, if the rent thing could possibly be. Yeah, it definitely is. is. But I also do like living with someone. I don't think if, like, I could live here for the same money, like, you didn't have to live here, mm -hmm. I'd probably prefer someone to live here. You know, you have friends, but some friends you feel like you can't, you know, like, you can't express if, like, you're unhappy with something. But actually, because I think maybe we're, like, very, it's, like, a very true friendship now, like, we can say anything. Like, if he does something that annoys me or vice versa, Mm. We can actually express that. So yeah, so the answer to that question was money and... Um, money, really. Yeah, you're not that annoying. Okay, so before we get to the more personal questions from our friends, here's some fun facts about marriage. In the UK, 50% of marriages end in divorce and the percent rises the more times you are married. The longest recorded wedding lasted 91 years and 12 days. The average married couple has sex 68.5 times a year. Not quite sure how they, they work that one out. And the last and most shocking fact of them all that something they should probably tell you before you get married is you actually have to pay to get divorced. If the split is amicable, you're looking around 593 
£1,000. However, if it's not amicable, you could be talking thousands by the time you've paid lawyers and court fees. So looking at these statistics, is marriage really the celebration of two souls uniting together forever, or just another one of the government's money-making schemes? All right, so now I've got two of my closest friends to ask questions that we're gonna answer. So the first question is, are there new boundaries between us? I'm not allowed to pinch his bum anymore. Yeah, that is something we had to enforce. So I'm very tactile, I, I do like to... You're a toucher, aren't I'm you? I'm a toucher and I'm a bum, a bum tapper. If we're close enough, I'll, I'll tap your bum. Pete said I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I feel like it's a bit weird if you're not actually like together but to I be told like you, slapping asses. If I was close with someone, like I would, like guy or girl, I would tap their bum. Mm -hmm. We're meant to knock. We Before don't, we come into rooms. But we sometimes forget. We don't really knock, do we? Plus also you can't really see into my no. room so much because I've got so much sh If anything, it took the pressure off not being together. I think we've actually been so much happier since we've split, which is the funniest thing ever. Yeah, it annoys me how much he, <laughs> how happy he tells me he is since we've split up. It takes away all the pressure. If he didn't want to spend time with me in the evening before, it would be like so sad, you know, like yeah. why does he not want to spend time with me? And now it means like I don't want to spend time with you yeah, this evening, anything. or vice yeah. versa. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, like we could have probably been like that before, but still, we want different things in life. So that's the only boundary I can think Bun of. Bum tapping, yeah. He prefers if I don't walk in to the bathroom if he's in there. Yeah, a lot of it's invaded my personal private space. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Have either of us slackened off on daily tasks? I think we're more mindful that someone else isn't just gonna pick up your shit now mm. because there is no expectation that, you know, your person is gonna do that. If anything, I think we are more mindful of how yeah, we Yeah, we're probably better, space. aren't we? Yeah. If anyone's learning anything from this, it's probably reconsider your relationship. <laughs> do we still have sex? Do we have sex? No. I wouldn't touch him with a barge pole. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to tap his bum every now and again. Nothing else. <laughs> Do you get on better without the pressure of a relationship? 100%. Which we kind of just answered, but 100%. If I can express something, I actually think Pete before kind of struggled. This isn't a personal thing. <laughs> struggled to like express, you know, maybe that he like cared about me in a way, almost like a diff like a protection thing. But I actually think since not being in a relationship, sometimes I'll just say like, I just love you. Mm. And like, he will sometimes say it back. But before it would have almost been like a, a hard like, Thank you. So yeah, I think like it's better. Final question is how do you go about dating other people? Well, we haven't really at the moment. But I actually think we both think we would be fine because to be honest, like he's a free bird. Like I'd be so happy. I'd be happy if Pete could find someone that he could like be like happy with. I'd also be stoked for you to get a rich rich man to whisk you away. That's not what I'm after though. I'm after deep love, I said earlier. Yeah, no, I think we'd be happy for each other. Like, there's no possessiveness. I don't think we've experienced possessiveness since we've split up. Oh, you know, even like a, a moment of insecurity about it. So maybe you think it's weird, maybe you don't. But this is our our normal 21st century living. Yeah, until February, and then we'll be going our separate ways. Yeah. And then we'll probably never hear from each other again. No, you can still book flights and stuff for I'll me. still book his flights for him. Thank you. You probably all missed me if you usually watch. You're wondering where I've been. In a room. <laughs> we have separate rooms. We didn't mention that actually. Like we're in a two bed apartment. Yeah. So obviously that makes it easier. It'd be weird sharing a bed. I couldn't share a bed again now. Yeah, okay. It's so sweaty. <laughs> Good. Okay, so that's going to be it for another video. Drop all your Tinder tips and tricks in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.